If it ain't broke, don't fix it, is a sentiment that I think a lot of tech enthusiasts share. I mean, did anybody ask for the Metro UI start menu in Windows 8? The thing about tech though, is that no matter how much you love it, it gets outdated. So even if you thought that the Logitech MX518 was the best mouse possible when you bought it back in the mid 2000s, and it's been working perfectly for you ever since, the fact is the industry has moved on. But what if your old favorite could get a spec upgrade without any of the things you love about it getting messed with? Well, Logitech has done just that. Introducing the Logitech G MX518 Legendary. Familiar feel, whole new deal. Speaking of a deal, Glasswire. With Glasswire, you can find out what's going on with your PC and Android phone when you're connected to the internet. You can see if there's any suspicious or badly behaving apps. Use offer code Linus and get 25% off at the link below. Let's start with the most obvious difference. To the absolute horror of some MX518 diehards, the finish on the key plate has been changed from the much beloved dented helmet look to a gradient metal flake finish that the company is calling Nightfall. It is a less radical design than the original, but come on guys, I think we can all agree that it still manages to look more special than your average office mouse. Then besides the key plate, there are a couple of less obvious aesthetic changes. Where the buttons used to have printed on red labels, they now have etched black on black labels. And in place of the old five-year-old's artwork on the fridge Logitech logo is the bold Logitech G logo, referring to the company's dedicated gaming brand, which they relaunched in 2013. Now feel-wise, the two mice have the exact same right-handed oval shape with depressions on each side for the thumb and fingers to rest in, resulting in a, for me anyway, very comfortable, high endurance mouse that's easy to lift up, especially the legendary, which is five grams lighter than its predecessor with fewer, larger mouse skates, and most notably, a soft touch rubberized wrapping on the side for extra friction. In my opinion, it also gives it a more premium look actually, but, this is not just a touched up reissue of an early 2000s mouse, uh-uh. Once we get under the hood, all the vital stats have been updated to Logitech's latest and greatest hardware, starting with their Hero optical sensor. This sensor is Logitech's baby. It boasts high enough performance to warrant upgrading the already stellar 3360 sensor in the G502, and high enough efficiency to squeeze 250 hours of battery life out of a single AA in the wireless G305. The easiest way to appreciate this upgrade though, is to look back at the capabilities of the original. When the MX518 first dropped in 2005, it used a form factor that was already in use by a handful of its predecessors, including the MX500 and the 510. But what made the 518 special what made it the mouse for gamers was not only its higher 1600 DPI resolution, but these buttons, which were actually used for page up and page down on its ancestors. Instead, on the 518, they were repurposed to allow players to step the DPI up and down in real time, a totally new feature that other popular mice like the Microsoft IntelliMouse and Razer Diamondback could not do. By default, three DPI settings were mapped, 400, 800, and 1600, but you could adjust these in software in 50 DPI increments. And today, the new one actually works much the same, except it comes with a fourth 3200 DPI default mapping, as well as the ability to add a fifth mapping in software of up to 16,000 DPI, which is cool, I guess, if you wanna mess with your roommates or something. You can also use this button to quickly revert back to a default DPI of your choice, which is actually a new function that used to be an alt tab kind of shortcut. The good news though, is that if you want your legendary to work the same way as the old one, in true 2019 fashion, every button on the mouse is remappable, even with macros. 
The original MX-518 was also better than its predecessors when it came to pointer acceleration, particularly negative acceleration. For those who need a refresher, normal acceleration makes your mouse cursor move in a non-linear way. In other words, moving your mouse 10 centimeters across your desk quickly will cause the cursor to move really far, while moving it 10 centimeters slowly will cause it to barely move at all. Now for general desktop use, acceleration was designed to help you get to the edge of your screen without flying off your mouse pad all the time. It's just that it's generally considered a bad thing for gamers because it can be harder to train your aiming muscle memory when your crosshair is moving at different speeds from one movement to the next. Negative acceleration is actually the opposite of that. So you move the mouse really fast and the cursor barely moves at all. As for the practical use case for that one, uh, that was more of a bug than a feature. So what made the MX-518 so great then was that the threshold where negative acceleration kicked in was much higher. As for the legendary though, it has no threshold. There's just zero mouse acceleration, period. And it also lacks another pitfall that the original suffered from even though other popular gaming mice like the IME 3.0 did not, despite being two years older. That's something called angle snapping. Also known as smoothing, angle snapping is a feature that was supposed to help users, especially those with shaky hands or less computer experience, move the cursor in a straight line. The idea was that if the sensor detected that you were kind of trying to move in a perfectly straight line, it would smooth out any deviations from that path snapping your cursor back on course. Again though, this really sucks in shooters where small deviations could be the difference between a headshot and a wasted opportunity. Now some mice at that time had software controls for their angle snapping with the ability to toggle it off outright. The MX-518, it did not. So in summary, the old one had angle snapping at all times. The legendary has angle snapping at no times ever. So then, as someone whose first high performance mouse, and by high performance, I mean one that cost more than 10 bucks at the local Radio Shack, was actually a Logitech MX Duo. It's kind of hard for me to look at this objectively. Everything about it kind of feels like home. I always loved the comfortable ergonomic shape of this lineup from Logitech. I give zero cares about the color because my hand is on it anyway, and I think the soft touch sides are a huge improvement. So if you were to ask me, should I buy the MX-518 Legendary? I'd probably be like, well, hell yeah, brother. Gaming was way better back then. We didn't have your microtransactions, your DLC, always on DRM, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, if you loved the old one, then yes, you're gonna love this one too. Go for it. It's great at high speeds. It tracks accurately, even when we tried to go our very fastest. It's comfortable, though uh, self-pause need not apply. And it's still just 60 bucks, which when you factor in inflation is actually cheaper than the original's $50 price tag in 2005. That is a heck of a deal for a well-built mouse with a flagship sensor in it. However, if I were to take a step back and look at it objectively, I'd say that going back to our bit at the beginning of this video about progress and all of that, modern mice like the G502 Hero for just $10 more, they're not so bad either. So if unlike me, you cut your gaming teeth on more up-to-date designs, you actually might find the more traditional spoon grip, the lack of RGB or even indicator LEDs, and the fairly basic button layout limiting to your gameplay. So, as always then, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Speaking of beautiful, this segue. FreshBooks cloud accounting software allows you to work anywhere. With their mobile app, you can create professional looking invoices on the go. You can snap pictures of your receipts so you don't lose them. You can stay on top of important conversations and you'll never miss an update. When a client has viewed their invoice for the first time, you will know so that you can stop with the stupid guessing games. Also, you can be notified when an invoice has become overdue. So start your 30-day free trial right now at freshbooks.com forward slash tech tips. Make sure you enter Linus Tech Tips in the how did you hear about us section. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, 
hit that like button or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. This one, not this one, sorry, sorry. I know some of you want this one, it's not down there. Also linked in the description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, yes, and our community forum, which you should totally join.